Tom Robinson. Great. Ross Boucher. Francisco Tomaski. Give me a little back of uh, a little history of uh, 280 North, or how it all started. Uh, sure. So uh, the three of us met in college uh, about five years ago or so, and um, it sort of started as a, a project uh, in college uh, where we worked on it for a few years, um, sort of as a part-time thing just while we were finishing up school. And then um, these guys went to go work for um, Apple for a couple of years. And, uh, and then when we all finished, um, or well, when I finished school, we all started doing this full time in January 2008 um, when we did the Y Combinator program. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Y Combinator at all, but they do sort of a, a batch um, group of about 20 companies each, twice a year. Um, they sort of fund them a little bit and, and sort of get them off the ground with their idea. Um, so that's when we started doing it full time. Okay. Uh, so you both of you guys were working at Apple, so I guess uh, lots of cocoa over there, right? Uh, actually, I, I worked on the iTunes store, okay. which doesn't use cocoa at all. Okay, so yeah. uh, okay. it's one of the few teams at Apple that programs in Java. Okay, that's uh, good to know. Uh, but still, uh, pr pretty much, I guess, the love of cocoa brought yeah. you to uh, using uh, kind of cocoa as a biz, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a combination of a cocoa being a good tool, and also, you know, we like to say that we didn't start off with the idea of porting cocoa to the web. It just kind of naturally evolved. Like we tried um, similar solutions to to what other people are trying, doing a pure JavaScript framework. You know taking a few ideas from Coco and eventually it, it seemed like the right approach was well let's start with Coco and see what we need to change as opposed to starting fresh and seeing what we need to keep the same so it's also funny because I heard um, that um, at the very basic you guys wanted some kind of graphical tool which might be some some at, after some days or hopefully uh, in a few weeks not in a few years Atlas but you first did a whole bunch of things before you reached Atlas right uh, yeah, we were originally trying to build um, dashboard widgets. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar with yeah. those. Uh, they, they were all the rage when 10.4 came out. Um, so, you know, we, we were putting a lot of effort into JavaScript and, and sort of didn't really go anywhere in particular because Dash Code came out and so that product was no longer really viable. Um, but we had done a lot of this work sort of in researching JavaScript and, and sort of advanced JavaScript techniques, which was actually really advanced at the time. This was like 2004, I guess, 2005. Um, so we, we kept going down that route just sort of as a hobby, and then two years ago, or a year and a half ago, we decided we should uh, pursue it full-time because okay. it was pretty interesting. Uh, there's something also really interesting is you guys kind of um, divide uh, the work. You guys have each one your specialty, and also each one your uh, kind of pet projects. Um, I think you're the one doing this Jack project, right? Yeah, right. Um, you know, it's all sort of ties into um, our goals of just making JavaScript and Objective-J better um, in general. And in particular, Jack is uh, focusing on the server side. Um, it's it's basically uh, Rack or WSGI, um, which are the sort of web interfaces for Python and, and Ruby, or Ruby and Python, respectively. And uh, so this sort of does the same thing for JavaScript. Um, so you'll actually be able to use Objective-J on the server as well. Yeah. So can we say you are more the server-side guy, or? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'd say I'm. I'm sort of focused on the server side. Um, sort of do a little bit of everything, but yeah, it's more my focus. Okay. What about you? Uh, I. It's hard to say. Um, like like Tom said, we all sort of dabble in a little bit of everything. Um, I've done a lot of the text stuff in Cappuccino. Okay. which uh, is in need of some retooling. But <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, uh, so I've touched everything. The, like Francisco and I, I guess, primarily work on, on UI level stuff. Despite the fact that we've all touched most of the stack, clearly there's some stuff that, you know, one of us started writing. So, you know, and, um, obviously, like, if there's a server side thing, Tom's going to be the one to fix it. And if it's a, you know, client side thing, it's going to be either a uh, roster I mostly. And, and then again, it's just mainly like, where have you put the most experience in recently? Because ev there's even parts of the project where, like, I may have started it, but, you know, Ross has gone in and completely rewritten it since then, so I, I'm not really the expert anymore. So. You're kind of more of the public guy, right? 
maybe. I, I don't know. Um, I, I don't that, think that's, that's my feeling. So I was happy to meet uh, 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 Tom and Ross. Oh, good, good. Yeah, I mean, get these guys back on the camera then. <laughs> I think this is more uh, their shyness than <laughs> my anti shyness. Um, uh, open source is very important for you guys. Um, you've open sourced this whole stuff. Lots of guys are working with you. Um, how, how is it going better for the better or for the worse since this thing is whole open sourced? Uh, well, it's, it's gotten about 30 contributors so far um, since we open sourced it. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, and I think a lot more interest than if it was not open source. Okay. Uh, so that's the main thing is it really helps for this, this sort of project, it, it basically needs to be an open source thing mm -hmm. to gain any sort of popularity. Part of managing an open source project is understanding like when it's important and when it isn't. I mean, obviously, we, in an ideal world, we would like to fix all the bugs and, and fix everyone's problems. Uh, in, in the reality, you know, we have to play the balancing act between our priorities, the project's priorities. Um, so we have actually separate projects which have almost nothing to do with this stuff uh, as like fundraising for our company. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we just balance all those things and try to do our best. Okay. I think another important thing to remember about open source is that, you know, it's not just us giving a lot, it's us taking a lot. Like we right. we're very thankful for projects like Cocotron and GNU Step, which we've based large portions of Cappuccino on and also it, it kinda necessitated that Cappuccino be open source, right? GNU Step has, you know, LGPL, so yeah. we need to be LGPL. Yeah. Um, before the BBC, you guys have been all to the Google I.O., how was it? Uh, it was fun. Um, got a free phone. That, that's always good. <laughs> <laughs> Apple doesn't, hasn't give, given us any iPhone 3GS? No. Um, yeah, I mean, you should really ask Tom. He actually went at the session. Ross and I were manning the booth most of the time. So. Oh, there were good sessions. Um, some interesting stuff on uh, you know, the new HTML5 stuff and, and that sort of thing, which is very relevant to us uh, in Cappuccino. We're pr focusing right now, um, one of our main uh, priorities is performance. Okay. Uh, we want to have a performance release as soon as possible. Which no Leopard release of Cappuccino. Um, yeah, I mean, examining the best we can memory performance in the browser, uh, you know, doing some profiling in IE and Safari yeah. and Firefox. The Latte Machato version of Cappuccino. Um, yeah, and I have to ask this question because otherwise some people out there will kill me. What about Atlas? Uh, it's getting there. It's getting there. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> it's a work in progress. We don't want to give a ship date that we can't meet. Yeah. We'd rather ship good software when it's ready than, okay. than upset people. The, the reason I ask is that um, open source and being public is a very good thing. On the other hand, it could be very frustrated to hear about things that are not yet really ready. And I, I, I guess um, we all want to play with this stuff, and it's in, not yet in our hands. Well, I mean, I guess my answer to that is that, you know, I think people don't know how much is already in their hands. Like, I would say that at least 50% of the work that goes into Atlas is actually the work that goes into Cappuccino, which is really the foundation behind Atlas. And again, things like nib to sib where you can actually use Interface Builder, gets you a lot of what you're going to get with Atlas. And clearly, the, clearly those are the same foundation, and, and we're gonna and we're having to do that work in Cappuccino. So, you know, if you pay attention to the commits in Cappuccino, you can more or less see what we're working on in Atlas. So. All right, so um, it's at 280north.com and uh, cappuccino.com org. Do you guys have to buy this URL because at the beginning was objectivej.org? Uh, we have objectivej.org and cappuccino.org, yeah. Okay. We did buy okay. cappuccino. Yeah, yeah, that's what I um, somehow understood. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.